All right, here's the moment of truth. Uh, my camera turned off, so I'm using my phone. I got that uh, voltage re regulator back on. It's meant to move like that. It's got rubber right here to isolate the ground. Uh, got the carburetor adjusted, got the battery back on, tightened it. Um, let's give it a shot. So as you recall, the voltage drops make sure it's a neutral let's give, it, let's give it some time let's give it some time here and see if it charges yep there it goes oh I didn't polarize it one thing uh, you have to do is polarize that so I did not polarize that voltage regulator before putting it in. Let me uh, let me get that done. All right, I'm back. So let's uh, polarize this. You're actually polarizing the generator, not necessarily the voltage regulator, but every time you install a new piece of the electrical system, you want to, well, at least the regulator and the um, generator, you want to... Um, polarize it so what you do is you you take a wire that's a wire here put it to the to the ground mine's a positive mine's a positive ground so the red cable is ground and you want to tap the armature ever so slightly which is going to be on the left side of there which is this cable right here so Technically, it's that cable right there. You can see it right there. Let's tap it real quick. See what it does. Let me go ahead and put a bend on this so I can get in there a little easier. Ever so quickly, just to... Oh. Right there. That's all you need to do. So let's go ahead and start it and see what it does. Not sure why that needle's jumping back and forth, so I'm gonna troubleshoot this a little more. Uh, and I'll get back with you guys with the solution. Okay, I'm back. After doing some research, I was polarizing it wrong. What you wanna do is touch the battery side right here over to the generator side to polarize it. So I'm gonna use this uh, ammeter um jumper here so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to start with this side here touch it touch it there while i let's see here there we go just gonna hold it here while i hold the camera i'm actually gonna set the camera aside here for a sec Be easier on this right side a lot easier let's put that on there and the, there it goes that's it didn't see a spark usually uh you're supposed to see a spark let me see what it does there we go no. still nothing still jumping i don't know I have to do some more research. All right, so I, I did some research last night, and uh, I might have uh, the ammeter 
cage uh, wired up wrong, so um, I have a rat's nest in here anyways. Uh, not literally, but I mean, look at this mess. So I'm taking this off and uh, I'm just gonna just fix everything. Clean all the ground connections, as you can see back down there in that bolt. It, that's where one of the ground connections is. That's pretty nasty, so uh, I will keep you updated on this. All right, so apparently this was making a ground somehow, <laughs> but uh, this was all nasty. I scraped it up, uh, but uh, I'm gonna try to keep working on it and seeing what. There's the ammeter. It's a little nasty. I'll uh, get my amp meter and take a look here and see what what we get. All right, so this is uh, <laughs> this is the ignition connection it had pretty nasty so we'll uh let me focus that sorry guys it's pretty nasty there so we'll fix that up and I'm just gonna put a waterproof butt connector right there red one right there Got black okay so this is uh these this wire in here is definitely the issue uh, so this is the hot side always hot with ignition off and I should be reading six point something volts I'm not getting anything unless I stab it in here I chase that down to the field side of the regulator and uh, same thing, not getting anything, so that's definitely not good. So I'm going to cut this, cut these, and temporarily use wire nuts to keep diagnosing, and then eventually I'll put these waterproof butt connectors in. All right, so I took the gauge off here for the, the ammeter. Oh, there's paint in there, rust in there. Uh, it looks pretty nasty, and the lines were pretty nasty. I already wire brushed them, but as you can see, they're pretty corroded on the inside there. Let's see if I can get that right there. Still getting the correct readings, but I might have to clean that up a little bit. And I'm going to test this on its own out of the tractor and see what's going on. Maybe it's this or just the they're dirty lines or dirty wires but uh anyways i'll keep you guys updated all right just for testing purposes i got this hooked up positive here this main large line here goes directly to the starter it's positive of course, the uh, output of that is negative um, for the gauge purposes, and that goes to the middle of the uh, voltage regulator. It says battery, so because this is getting power, it loops over this. The battery cable here gives you the positive. So let's try that out and see what it does. Yep, still the same reading. Well, I'm going to keep working on it. All right, so a little update here. I had the batteries hooked up wrong. Or the battery hooked up wrong. That's why this one's red. It's a, it's a positive. It has to go on the positive side. Because positive runs 
to the chassis and then I tried starting it nothing so then I looked at the schematic well these are swapped so whoever had this tractor before me wired it up conventionally like a 12 volt so uh, that's why it's not charging let's go ahead and reverse these this is the ignition has to go to negative and this is positive so to distributor so that needs to go over to that side we'll get that figured out and then we'll try cranking it all right so I hooked this up uh, just momentarily of course um, I swap those cables out swap the battery cables out or exchange positive negative negative positive Let's see what we get here Make sure we don't arc oh we get some power there well I didn't go backwards so that's good it's promising let me see if the tractor starts now it didn't start earlier nice there we go. So that was the problem. Oh, finally. It's finally. Finally. Ah, <laughs> oh, they did a negative, uh, negative ground instead of positive ground. The serial number is supposed to be positive ground. Uh, all right, well, that regulator I had was probably good. Um, the original, so I think I'm gonna put that one back on and have this one as a, as a backup. Well, all right, so I got the gauge back on, cleaned up and uh, Ready to roll. So, uh, as you can see, I put these waterproof butt connectors on, crimped them real good. These are really nice. Got the reverse light hooked up, tucked away. Just got to hook up that ground down there. I scraped that. I'm going to zip tie all this, and then it goes on um, one of these clips. And I actually have the one that goes here. Got a little twisted, but I'll straighten that out and uh, curl that up put these bolts on and uh, i'm going to swap out that regulator uh just i want to verify that that other one the old one is still good and uh, i'm going to keep it on so anyways thanks bye all right so i couldn't get this with my regular camera so uh as you can see i have a screwdriver in there <laughs> i forgot about that oh goodness uh yeah I dropped it and I forgot to pick it up. But anyways, I have a screen uh, filter for that um, inlet right there that looks, man, that looks nasty. But uh, nonetheless, let's see if I can put that in. I probably won't be able to record it, but I will try. So here's that screen. And it has a screen on top, obviously. But, um... It just inserts into there so um, yeah we'll see how that goes <laughs> and this is really fragile so I'll, I'll see if I can do this all right so I'm draining this tank it's coming out really slow which is kind of worrisome let's try something here is it coming out faster yep there's something stuck in there wow i did not know that Probably full, yep, it's full. 
Spilling fuel everywhere. Got it. Got it. Not too bad, I guess. I just use these as uh, chopsticks. Some aluminum pieces I got here. Some 6061. Oh, uh, let's see. Make sure that's in there good. Yep, that's in there good. I'm going anywhere. That'll just prevent more, you know, sediment from going, big chunks going into here. And, uh, you know, clogging that. And then, so I have three, I have a screen. up. So I have that one I just installed. I have a screen right under there, circle, uh, round one. And I have a filter here, so carburetor should not get any debris in there. So let's try to start this puppy and see what it does. All right, well, let's try starting it. Let me... In this valve here. Can see that. There we go. See how fast the fuel comes out because it's supposed to come out. Oh, well, I drained the fuel, so let me end that. Ah, strainer is a lot higher. So. Yep, that's what's going on. So that strainer is a lot higher, as you can see. Uh, so now I really have to get more fuel running in there all the time. Tank doesn't look all that bad. Anyways, let's try that. Let's put more fuel in it. And actually this time I bought some uh, ethanol free fuel for the tractor.